that love coming home to a new package on their doorstep. Today I got to come home to this awesome Comics for Fun and Profit shirt on mine, and you can too. If you go to comicsfunprofit.threadless.com, you can check out their cool merch and get a shirt just like me. That was comicsfunprofit.threadless.com. Join the club. It's where all the cool kids are. Check out beacons.ai slash comicsfunprofit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need. All in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need thanks back to the show aloha it's jason from hawaii welcome to a special edition of the comics for fun and profit podcast in this episode i will be talking to the organizer producer and founder of Kauai comic con aaron yamasato aaron is here to promote the 2024 Kauai comic con it will be on June 8th at the beautiful Royal Sonesta Kauai Resort. Aaron, welcome to the Comics for Fun and Profit podcast. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> doing great. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on the podcast. Love your interviews. Oh, no. Aaron, I'm going to say Aaron. Just, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you very much. That's thank an you. honor. <laughs> oh, thank No, just thank you for letting me interview you. So, you know, mm -hmm. to promote, um, you know, Kauai Comic Con. So, Aaron, I'm going to give a little bit um, of your background to our listeners. And please feel free to correct me at any time or add anything. So, okay. listeners, Aaron was born and raised in Hawaii. He mm -hmm. lives in Lihui, Kauai with his wife and um, two daughters. He, he worked as a Hollywood casting agent for Power Rangers. The original. The the original, okay. The, the original, original when it first started. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. Okay. <laughs> now you've created you've created award winning animated short films. You've directed the movie Blood of the Samurai, um, that that received the best Hawaii film award at the Hawaii International Film Festival. Now, off the cuff question because I forgot to um ask this um Aaron uh, right my question. Mm -hmm. Is it's on? It's available on like um DVD. Is it also on um video on demand too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can get it on. That's yeah. The first movie, yeah, Blooded Summer. It's on uh DVD. You can get that, and also um you can stream it on various things. But mm -hmm. I always say instead of buying it somewhere, yeah, <laughs> it's actually uh free. You can watch it free on a uh, Tubi. Okay. You heard of Tubi? <laughs> all the the yeah. B movies and the horror movies, and because it is, it's like a cult B movie mm -hmm. that I made, and you know, it's very uh, uh how do you say, it kind of fits into that whole Tubi universe. <laughs> so, but yeah, I always say, yeah, don't buy. I mean, actually, I should say buy it then, you know, <laughs> but for the distribution. But I would say, hey, you can watch it for free on Tubi, <laughs> and and you can actually watch part two on Tubi too. So. And then, so that yeah, you know, Blood of the Samurai. You've also worked on Blood of the Samurai um, Part Two, Blood mm -hmm. of the Samurai, the series, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. TV. And then also too, you did a spin-off TV series called Ninja X. Is that correct? Uh yeah, Ninja EX. Yeah, it's like a oh, ninja, yeah. but it's uh in the same universe as Blood of the Samurai. So the characters from Blood of the Samurai help the ninja, the ninja hero in Hawaii. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, that's nice. And then now, according to your website, now was this one of your latest projects, Ninja EX Bio Killers? Now, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it's a horror. It's a 
horror action film that has won multiple film festival awards. Now, this one, I'm going to ask, where can people, you know, buy it? Is it available on DVD or is it available on streaming as well? Too? Not yet, okay. but, uh, but it's, it's hilarious because uh, so the TV series in other shows, it was more meant like um, more for like kids and teenagers, general audience. Mm -hmm. But then this new one, I was like, I was talking with the, the actors and everything. You know, I want to kind of just do it our own thing, kind of make it kind of more cult B-movie, <laughs> 80s. So uh -huh. it's very 80s action inspired like horror movie and then so it's very like kind of a cheesy kind of violence with a lot of practical effects that's nice like, so we had a lot of fun you know actors getting sprayed with blood on their face uh -huh. and buckets <laughs> of blood being splashed and <laughs> so basically it, i entered it into a whole bunch of um horror film festivals Oh, that's so uh, yeah, uh -huh. that's how I got I won awards, and uh, uh -huh. I got to like travel. Yeah, go to the mainland like horror film festivals, and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so now that the festival run is over, now we're looking for distribution. Going oh, out. okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna hopefully I'll circle back because when we start talking a little bit about your origins and what kind of movies, I'm gonna ask you about the when you attended the horror film festivals. I'm gonna ask you a little bit more questions on that. Okay, mm -hmm. now. Here. Where can listeners follow you on social media? Mm, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. the Facebook, mm -hmm. so the usual Twitter or X, the, mm -hmm. the Aaron Yamasato. Okay. And then where can listeners follow the convention um, on social media for any updates? Mm, yeah. So uh, kawaiicomicconvention.com or you can just Google Kawaii Comic Con. And uh, yeah, we have the Instagram site and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. website so you can check it out there and then also too, i'm going to ask you promote the convention website store i mean i you're, you already mm -hmm. gave out the website name but promote mm -hmm. the store like what do you sell the merchandise oh. that you sell because it's pretty cool it's bit more than just the regular convention <laughs> t-shirt yeah i travel the thing is i tried to make it more like you know kawaii style hawaii style mm -hmm. so we made kind of like a kawaii comic con and uh, like a surf style T-shirt, like a locomotion or mm -hmm. TNT, you know, with the um, the big logo in the back and then the okay. thing in the front. And yeah. uh, our our logo is so Kauai. The island of Kauai has a lot of chickens. Yes. Have you, mm -hmm. have you been? Have you been to? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kauai has a lot of chickens. So we thought, oh, to make the mascot a chicken. And I love Godzilla. Mm -hmm. and so I love Mecha Godzilla. So I was like, oh, why don't we make a, a mecha chicken? <laughs> so it's kind of like a mecha Godzilla, but it's a giant chicken mm -hmm. as a mascot. So what is that? Um, yeah, you can look. It has our mascot. You can get our mascot, the mecha chicken. And it's actually designed mm -hmm. by Matt, <laughs> by Matt yes. Frank. Yes. Incredible, because he is like the, the kaiju king mm -hmm. uh, Godzilla tokusatsu artist extraordinaire mm -hmm. and i was a huge fan of his from way back when so when yes. i did the comic con for Kauai, i was like okay you gotta do a chicken and make a chicken who can i reach out to and of course there's a lot of uh, talented artists out there but yes. i thought shoot for the stars yeah. <laughs> I, like, oh, I should try and ask anyway and luckily through a connection mm -hmm. a friend uh uh, at Monster Attack Team. I don't know if you heard, but Monster Attack oh. Team is like a kaiju tokusatsu website magazine. Okay. And then so Ed Holland runs that. And through this is kind of an interesting story. I think about yes, yes. lucky if you don't mind. What is uh uh so me as as this huge Matt Frank fan, I like have his t-shirts and mm -hmm. I follow his work and listen to his podcast and, uh, you know, follow him on social media. Mm -hmm. so anyway, I'm at San Diego Comic-Con mm -hmm. with my daughter. And then um, my friend Ed from Monster Attack Team calls. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, hey, Aaron, I'm, I'm, at, Sa I'm at San Diego Comic-Con. And you're, I see you're at San Diego Con. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking on the phone. And yeah, yeah, yeah I'm here. We, we should meet up. Let's meet up. And he's like, okay, after, um, I'm with Matt now. And I'm like, 
Matt? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, okay. You know, right? Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're with Matt Frank right now? Like, yeah, Matt is doing a signing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's kind of, he's with them. And, you know, so I was like, oh my, I gotta, I gotta meet him. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, come over. So I rushed out from the, you know, like I rushed the yeah. and We got, you know, he introduced me. Ed introduced me to Matt mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we got to talking and this was way before um, the idea of Kauai Comic Con. Mm -hmm. so, but luckily through that connection, yes. you know, we, we connect. So mm -hmm. after several years, then I had the idea of the Mecca Chicken and Kauai Comic Con. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, great. If I got Matt Frank do it, oh, might as well try. And yeah. he's like, yes. I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah. So listen to you know, um the th I just want to mention too that um that Matt Frank is going to be one of the um the um guests at KawaiCon. Mm. And yes. also too, well, let's talk lit I'm going to just say let's just jump a we're going to jump around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And that's no problem because because the other thing too is that um I know Matt has done some work on the uh for Behemoth or the the red man series and then mm. i correct me if i'm wrong aaron but he also um did oh what was it? the for idw mm -hmm. he did a 25 issue run of godzilla i can't mm. remember which series. yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 he did the uh godzilla uh series oh um if if you go yeah he did godzilla he also did marvel's uh ultraman the, oh, like, okay. Fair, fairly recent too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he did that, and then he also did um, what is that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he, I'm looking. He did the Space Godzilla, mm -hmm. Rival Godzilla, Rival. Oh, yes. yes. The Rival IDW, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, Ultraman Pinball Machine. He mm -hmm. did all the artwork for the pinball machine for uh -huh. Ultraman, and yeah, that that's like the, yeah, he did like um. Was it Transformers? Mm -hmm. Comic covers for Transformers and My Little Pony and <laughs> like he's all... versatile. He's very versatile. Yeah, is it all this? Uh, yeah, in the in the comic book world. And then I guess for me too, I'm also uh, a film fan, so mm -hmm. I picked up his uh, uh, artwork or the he did um, the Gamera, the Gamera the turtle. Yes. The giant turtle. Yeah, yeah. So he did a. Uh, the box set, they came out with this huge box set, Arrow Video. Okay. And it had all the Gamera films in it. Oh, but, yeah, we're talk is this the ones from the 1960s and 70s run? All of them. Like, even to the most recent, like, Gamera the Brave and, I mean, all the uh, Shinsuke Kaneko, the, I mean, the, the like, the newer versions. The ones from the 90s, yeah. The ones from the 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Gamera, um, um, Gamera from, Gamera the, um. Guardian of the Universe. Oh, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. I love that. That was great. Oh, <laughs> so he did the box art for oh. all of that, and uh, what is it? A uh, Daimajin. He just did yeah. Daimajin. No, uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, That's... okay. I, see, this is the weirdest thing. You know, growing up in Hawaii, like I'm surprised more people haven't. I remember as a kid, yeah. loving Daimajin, like on TV when I was in elementary school. It's a black yeah, and man. okay, so it's a okay. black. So this is the cool thing is, so me as a kid, what loving Godzilla, and I used yeah. to watch the Kiku, right, the samurai, yes, of yeah. the Shogun, you know, the King Samurai, all that stuff. So uh, one afternoon, I'm watching this old black and white uh, show, Daimajin, and it's basically a samurai mixed with uh, not Tokus. It's like a, he's a giant. Basically, he's this giant guardian statue. So he looks like this oh. giant. Uh, uh, kind of like a samurai kind of, but he's a guardian statue, and he kind of yes. like uh, helps the people get revenge. Yes. Like, I think villagers I think, against yes, army okay. kind of thing. So it's a mixture of like the samurai genre mm -hmm. kind of with the giant, uh, you know, beast mm -hmm. or giant mm -hmm. monster, like knocking things down. Oh, with Daimajin. Okay. Yeah. So all right. Because I've got I'm gonna say I've probably seen pictures. But mm -hmm. the, the funny thing is, you and listeners, um, mm -hmm. you know, me and Aaron, we're talking about stuff from the seventies, you know, that we've seen, and <laughs> you know, um, you know, I've seen pictures, and mm -hmm. 
some of the pictures that we have I always see is like this um the caption would be all in Japanese. So I have no idea what this is, you know, but it's like, oh, this is later you, you see like, I see, I know that guy. Yeah, that that his name? That's his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, also, I'm stoked that Matt Frank did Daimajin after Gamera. I was like, wow. <laughs> so I'm going to bring my uh, box sets and have him sign it when he comes to Kauai. <laughs> oh, that's going to be nice. So <laughs> listeners, so if, if you're not too familiar with uh, Matt Frank's um, art style, you know, as we mentioned that, you know, he did Ultraman recently for Marvel. He's done, you know, some work at IDW with um, Godzilla. Um, his Godzilla, the details on Godzilla is very amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a little bit of that Art Adams vibe to it because the <laughs> details, mm -hmm. you know, because I still remember that, that one that one shot that Art Adams did of Godzilla was amazing. Mm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> but it's yeah, mm -hmm. when you see it as a, you know, as a fan, Godzilla, you know, it's kind of like what you want to see. Yes. So I was gonna say, like for him, like he he did this print for Famous Monsters, this convention on the mainland. Mm -hmm. It was, and I love this print so much. I got like two T-shirts. It's Godzilla fighting Ultraman, like yes. in a canyon with all the rocks. Yes. And Ida, like, you know, here like driving on his motorcycle. Yeah. Was, so it's kind of like, you know, like all these dream. I mean, as a kid, I would have loved to see that. And he he just uh, did the artwork. I was like, wow, that's the most amazing image. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, it is. And again, listeners, if you want to see, you know, what you know, what Aaron was talking about, the the you know, um, the blending of Godzilla, Ultraman, and even Kikaida. You know, go to the Kauai Com um, Comic Con website, and, and as Aaron said, just Google Kauai Comic Con, and mm -hmm. you know, look it up. It's yeah, it's very. Yeah, we have we have yeah. links to his work, like yes. all his book covers, and yeah, it's like wow. <laughs> so all right, he'll be there on Kauai in Hawaii. <laughs> all right, so Aaron, I'm, let me. I'm sorry, let me just. I I want to do this too because I want to make sure I want to. I got to give a. Big shout outs to a couple mm -hmm. of comic book artists, Andrew Gutierrez and John J. Murakami. Um, you know, and um, Drew and John, they both had a hand in helping me contact Aaron and help setting up this interview. So, Andrew and John, thank you very much. Um, Aaron, I'm going to ask, actually, yeah, I'm going to ask yeah, you. Thank you. you no, I, anything because. Yeah, I was going to say thank you very much too to them too. In fact, John Murakami. Like, uh, what is that? He's actually one of the, he's one of my advisors for Kauai Comic Con. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, what is that? He, so, you know, because he's such an expert, like, he, he's a longtime friend. Uh -huh. And so we would always get together at Mililani Zippies. Oh, uh, yeah. With, uh, <laughs> with uh, Jason Yadao uh, yes. from Otaku Ohana. Yeah. And so basically, we just kind of get together and just kind of geek out, right? And then, um, you know, just talk about the conventions and whatnot. Yeah. And then, and then, so I just kind of like floated the idea to him. Then, what do you think? I have this idea about Kauai. Yes. And uh -huh. I'm starting, but I did my research first, you know, and I kind of pitched it to John. I was like, what do you think? And mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So with both of them going to so many conventions in Hawaii, mm -hmm. pretty much everything. So I got to know uh, basically from them, like what to do, what not to do, yes. kind of what to go for, you know, what they liked, what they didn't like. Yes, about yeah. cons. So I'm there taking notes on my phone, like, okay, okay. And, yeah. you know, so they're like great uh, advisors of like what to watch out for and mm -hmm. uh, what's good. And yeah. So I'm going to mm -hmm. ask, like, when did you, when did you start um, coming up with this idea of doing, Kauai Comic Con because we're looking are we looking back at 2017 2018 yeah so this is the okay so I was gonna ask you about that actually I mean huh? interesting or talk to you about that was you know there was so for me I grew up just loving all the sci-fi and comic yeah. books and I was going to comic conventions so I I you know even though I'm born and raised in Hawaii I went to film school in LA in, in the 90s. So I lived in LA in the 90s. And that's where I discovered 
uh, you know, San Diego Comic Con yes. in the nineties, you know, when we went and you know with friends and mm-hmm. when it, you know, back when it was empty. <laughs> yeah, yes, because I was gonna go. Back yeah, nineties in the nineties, yeah. yeah, and you know, so I go to various Comic Cons and I just loved it. Right, you can meet celebrities and get yes. comic books. And, and back then in the nineties, it was a lot of bootlegs. So oh, like, okay. Bootleg, uh, you know, like VHS tapes. Yes. Uh, you know, like uh, yeah. Army of Darkness <laughs> or oh, Evil yeah. Dead Three. Because now, mm-hmm. listen, yeah, because yeah, Army of Darkness. Because now, correct me if I'm wrong. Because like, I think Evil Dead Two, mm-hmm. we you could never find it on VHS or even the original one. Because uh, I think- well, I gotta say, that, okay, this is I'm a, like a huge, as you know, like the horror convention thing. Yes. Also, not only a, a I'm like a huge horror nerd. Okay. Because in the 80s, as you know, like, remember in the 80s, that whole horror boom of like Freddy Krueger and Chucky. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and Jason and yeah. all that. Oh, Jason. <laughs> your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think of that? Like, it's Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th. Were you like, oh, I got the same name as this no. guy? <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, on Friday the 13th, I never got harassed with that name. I really? Never yeah. Because it's cool. Because Jason's <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because it's funny because my daughter has a friend named Momoko, Mom- and they call her Momo. And there was this internet meme, Momo. It was kind oh. of this scary obake ghost girl. Oh, that was like a few years ago when, yeah. And then she was like, why? Why? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> That's my name. Why is it scary? <laughs> but yeah, Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th is cool. So. <laughs> But anyway, no, I'll going back to that is like so me being this like horror um nerd mm-hmm. in the 80s. So yeah, I, I had Evil Dead 2 uh, on t- I got to see it uh and like invite all my friends over and you know like I'm the one, I'm that guy who <laughs> had the tape, the R-rated is tape. It, is it a, all my was it over. a tape or was it No, was no, it-, it was a regular. I got it from Long's Drugs in Kalihi. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, basically i saw i was like well what is this movie this is incredible yeah. and then uh you know i invited over some friends and they're like what is this this is great and then another, another group of friends you gotta see this movie so oh, yeah i'm a huge uh evil dead uh texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> yes. oh okay yeah but anyway yeah 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 so that's why going back to that evil dead bootleg thing yes 91 i believe i don't know but basically what happened was army of darkness had all this legal trouble like it it was made it was already made but because of legal trouble they couldn't release it in theaters oh okay and so if you went to these conventions you you could find it on vhs like this grainy yeah like oh this is like a dream come true yeah. i went and i uh i bought it and watched it and i loved it i was like and then people ask me like what's your favorite movie of all time mm-hmm. and i say of course there's like the the big heavy hitters like star wars back to the future oh, yeah. right i was like but if you're talking about just like uh comfort food yeah you know, and for me it's army of darkness <laughs> i just I... popped on and just love 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 that movie yeah yeah so i was gonna say how um it was kind of crazy finding that uh Mm -hmm. you know that bootleg but i had to keep secret because it hadn't come out yet oh um the crazy thing is me being this evil dead fan i love to share this story i love it how bruce campbell is a household name yes with uh, with geeks these days yes because back in 90 in early 80s 90 uh, late 80s early 90s so he did a signing in LA at a oh. Forbidden Forbidden World. It was a comic book store, in Sherman oh, Oaks. Yeah. Okay. It closed down, but oh. I used to frequent there. And then I saw a sign, like a homemade sign, and it had <laughs> uh, Bruce Campbell appearing. Yeah. I was like, oh! So I told my girlfriend or wife, my my girlfriend at the time like we gotta go we gotta go right <laughs> and then uh i was like so excited you know being from hawaii and this is the yeah. chat my idol <laughs> and then i i go there on the day so excited I'm like oh where's the line uh yes there was no line 
and start going to the comic book store. Yeah, you're kind of yeah. the right day. Is this yeah. where is everybody? Yeah. yeah. Then I go in and he's in the back of the comic book store at a table just with his daughter, like elementary school. Uh-huh. And I was like, nobody. Wow. <laughs> I was like, and he was like, hey, I'm like, oh, I'm a big fan. You know, I'm there with my girlfriend. And, you know, and then so like I'm he had this evil dead um posters I signed. Yes. And I was like, oh, and I was geeking out with him. He was super cool, super wow. nice, you know, talking. And then so what happened was we lived not too far away. Mm -hmm. So after like, okay, bye, thanks, right? Yeah. I ran back home and I got my like Evil Dead to import CD yeah. and Evil Dead books. I just grabbed it and I rushed back. Yes. And it was still empty. I came back in. He's like, oh, you're back. Hey, hi. Like, yeah, I got my import Japanese, uh, my, uh, yeah. you know, the import CD. And kind yeah. of, you know, so he signed it and he was like explaining all the photos in it. Like, oh, this was just a shot of us fooling around. It's not in the movie. I was like, oh, thank you for telling me that. I always wanted to know. And, but it was super friendly, super nice. And But yeah, I thought like, yeah, that was a, a geek out <laughs> moment. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. And now the thing is, it's so cool is where um, you, you got to stand in line for hours to yeah. meet so I was yeah. like, I remember the day I went into a comic book store. Oh, and going back to the story of the Evil Dead, uh, uh -huh. the Army of Darkness was, he was saying, oh, make sure you see Army of Darkness coming oh, soon. Oh, that's cool. And I'm, like, oh. and I'm like, I already saw it. I couldn't say <laughs> anything. Oh, he would have killed me. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think he would have killed you. I think he would have gone. I think he would have gone, oh, darn it, miss. <laughs> It's held up in that, that legal thing again. <laughs> oh, but yeah, yeah, no, I was like, but I yeah. knew it. I was like, I couldn't say like, I saw it. It's the greatest movie ever. <laughs> uh, I think you uh, should have said it, but I think he would, I, I really think he would have gone, oh, I'm glad. Spread the oh, word, things, man, when it comes out. I wonder, though, because as a fan, like I listened to his podcast and, and he's like, he was pretty upset. <laughs> that it was bootleg. Oh, okay. <laughs> he thinks that's maybe that's why it bombed. <laughs> oh, <it> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I saw it many times at the theater at Universal City Walk. <laughs> like, you know, that's so cool that. Uh, and, and listeners, don't worry, we're going to get to promote oh, yes, it. Yes, sorry. <laughs> but I have oh. to say, that is so cool because, like you said, it's. In the 90s, because like you said, San Diego, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure when you went there, there was like maybe 20 people in line to get in. You know, because there's going to be just walk right in, yeah. Or something, yeah, or, or just, you know, sometimes you walk in and you look around and and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure, you know, people, you know, you had comic book artists, you know, signing mm -hmm. stuff for like either like a buck or, you know, for free or. Um, oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. a, the story that George Perez, uh, mm -hmm. he mentioned in one of his past interviews. That mm. uh, like back in the '90s, he would do sketches for like five bucks, and wow. we're not just talking headshots. I mean, it's like you know, mm. chest and up. The and he, he does it fast, but it's like, oh my god, legend. That's imagine having that. Oh, yeah. But I mean, for you to mm. talk to Bruce Willis, <laughs> Bruce Campbell made sign. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. no, Bruce Campbell. Sorry, Bruce Campbell. See, I'm so excited that you met Bruce Campbell. Oh, yeah, I'm there's that like geeky girl. Yeah. Basically, oh, that was, we were off in a tangent, was basically we're talking about the love. I wanted to ask you, too, or you probably know that, like, the I was going to say the rise of Comic-Cons. Mm -hmm. so, you know, in the 90s for me, going to Comic-Cons mm -hmm. and everything. But then I noticed, so what happened was, um, so I, I would go to San Diego Comic-Con and all that. And um, uh, I, it was funny. One year I went. Mm -hmm. And there was this thing called Twilight. <laughs> oh, yeah. And my daughter was at that age. She was still in elementary school. Mm -hmm. But she was an avid reader, like a Harry Potter. Oh, oh, yeah. It was that time, you know, Harry Potter. It was a time yeah. of borders. Yes. You know, so yes. You know, it was like, oh, you know. And then, so she's kind of like my little geek uh, Padawan. <laughs> and so... <laughs> You know, I, I kind of wanted to her to get into. I love all horror and vampires, and I, and yes. I thought, 
well, you know, maybe I should, you know, so I saw this thing, okay, it's vampires, but it's for kids. Uh -huh. So it's not rated R. So maybe it might be appropriate. And, it, you know, it's kind of like the, the buzz at Comic Con. So yeah. basically, I came back and said, you know, this thing called Twilight, it was like uh -huh. kind of they're promoting it. And, uh -huh. Let's go to Borders, and I bought it, and then she read it. She's like, "Oh, what is this, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's vampires." I go, "Oh, okay, it's vamp oh, good." And she's like, "It's so cool." So, like, "Oh, good." It's kind of like a what gateway drug? Yes, yeah. vampires <laughs> for yeah. I don't know. But anyway, the thing is, is like I noticed from there, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of explaining what a Comic Con was. Uh -huh. And and she was like, I want to go up with you to San Diego. I oh, want to go to yeah. Comic Con with you. I was like, wow, I was so yeah. like so proud. Like, oh yes, yeah, that's so mm -hmm. nice, right? And then um, I was just saying, so that was like what 2010, probably around there, 2010, uh -huh. 2011, mm -hmm. and like uh, Doctor Who came back and it was like really yes. popular and mm -hmm. all this kind of like nerd chic like uh mm -hmm. comic book movies like iron man marvel had started yeah. mm -hmm. so we noticed like that was a time like in the 2010 2013 like yes. really started taking off this mm -hmm. comic on mm -hmm. people recognizing what it is yeah. and wanting to attend mm -hmm. so so basically in 2013 around there um uh, so my daughter and I, oh, you know, always talking about Comic Cons and what to go and different mm -hmm. guests and meeting various people. And mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, I wish um, Kauai, our little island, had a Comic Con because we would nice. know, you know, I would go to the ones on Oahu all the time. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and as I say, like, as a fan of Comic Cons, any chance to get it in Hawaii. So mm -hmm. I was there when uh, Kauai Con first started at the Alamoana Hotel. Oh, the kawaii the um the anime more okay. like anime. yeah wow. uh, but yeah so any basically and of course you remember when uh amazing came yes. first came out. oh that was huge <laughs> stan that's lee. when they yeah they brought stan lee down yes ah that was amazing yeah. so it, it's amazing so anyway <laughs> that was the time yeah so anyway we we're talking about yeah when will uh i think maui Ma, Alika, you know, Maui's Comic Con yeah. had started. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a Hawaii Con. Yes, on the Big Island, yes. On the Big Island. Mm -hmm. And of course, Oahu had all these cons mm -hmm. uh, were popping up. And then mm -hmm. so we're like, when is Kauai? When is Kauai going to mm -hmm. get? We're waiting, we're waiting, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then so finally, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And what if I kind of use my, what? I, so I told I said, my daughter, like, what if? We just do our own Comic Con using like nice. my connection. Why don't we just start? So I mean, just kind of like you know how you talk about a dream. Like, what if we open a restaurant? What if we open this pop up store? What if we you know, just kind of brainstorm? You know, we're like yeah. we're like we're talking about Comic Cons here. Like, what if what if we had our own Comic Con? Who would you invite? And yeah. what would you want? And you know, we just started getting really excited about it. And we're like, wait a minute, yeah, why don't we really look into it? And yes. Kind of see if we could really you know make this happen using mm -hmm. my filmmaking the connections yes and um you know and also i was gonna say using the, the filmmaking connections i thought it was fascinating where uh luckily when when putting this together mm -hmm. i was saying well it kind of went more way more uh smoother than i thought i mean it's kind of like um so i said it's kind of like making a film mm -hmm. like uh making a movie Mm -hmm. Just the whole uh, pre-production and planning mm -hmm. and communication yeah. and patients and mm -hmm. uh, actors and mm -hmm. you know, all the it was, it was like it was kind of it was very similar to kind of putting together a movie. So luckily with that, I I worked with uh, Bandaisuke yes. for Blood of the Samurai Part yes. Two, played the sensei. So luckily I had that connection. Mm -hmm. with him and I'm like oh what if I approach Bonsan and see if he might be interested in mm -hmm. being a guest you know at a comic con and he's been mm -hmm. to comic cons on the mainland yes mm -hmm. he was familiar with it oh, okay. so, but yeah so stuff like that I was like oh yeah I should like reach out to some of my um friends that I know and ask mm -hmm. if they'd like to be guests and yeah yeah so that's how it kind of the origin of Kauai Comic Con started with the uh just kind of like a what if. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
we're like oh yeah what if we started or that is so cool <laughs> um yeah now the thing is um the <laughs> location Royal Sonesta Resort how did, mm. how did you how did that because that's that, has that been the same location for well at least a few times I I know is like um because you guys started the convention I think mm -hmm. the year before the pandemic, right? <laughs> I know, right before the, yeah, but, the pandemic. So luckily, luckily. I mean, it's, I laugh because we were shut down right after our first yeah. one. It was like, oh. wow, it's a success. Yay, let's do it again. Shut down because of the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, but but in a way, it was kind of like, it was kind of nice that we did it right before too, because right before it got shut down, because we're saying, what if we're right about to do it and then the pandemic yes, hit? Then, yeah. So looking at the bright, brighter side of things, we're like, yes. well, at least we did it, you know, before. Mm -hmm. and so that was 2019. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we put it together at the Royal Sonesta was actually, uh, it was a Marriott before. Oh, okay. All right. It was the Marriott. But what happened was during the pandemic, they got bought out oh, okay. by, um, by the Royal Sonesta. So uh, Royal Sonesta, I was saying, is, yeah, it, it's a more high scale, upper scale kind of resort mm -hmm. kind of brand. So at first, we we're kind of worried, like, you know, because the Marriott, there is so um, inviting and so, how do you say, supportive. And, yeah. oh, I hope that, you know, the Royal Sonesta is just as supportive. But, yeah, they've yeah. been awesome okay well, that's so cool. luckily we thought that like, uh oh it might not fit into their whole um uh new image plan but yeah. fortunately they're like oh no 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 you know they invited us back oh that's and, nice that's uh, yeah they're they're incredible yeah and then <laughs> um so right now you have it um how did you guys decide just to do a one-day convention Exactly. Yeah. So this is the thing, talking about the what if and everything, yeah. right? So basically, we didn't even know if there were people that were going to come out because Kauai. Oh, so, man. you know, so I'm like, uh, well, what is that? Born and raised in Hawaii. And, you know, my yeah. father's from Kauai and, you know, we grew up and so we kind of have a, a I, I guess I, you could say I have, a, what is it, like both worlds, you know, like a, how do you say I'm very geeky and I know all this cons on the mainland and all that, but I also know local style, which is, you know, like Kauai and the people here, I have relatives, you know, my aunties and uncles and cousins. And, you know, I kind of know that, of course, there's some that, that like, uh, you know, comic books and things, but the majority of my relatives and friends, they don't even, they didn't even know what a comic con was mm -hmm. <laughs> or is. Oh. So basically, you know, with the the pulse of the community, you know, so I've yeah. been here. Like, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, you know, because yeah. like people even come out mm -hmm. and basically will people cosplay. That was the yes. biggest, biggest and most amazing surprise is we have cosplayers here. Nice. <laughs> so I'm like, that is so nice. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, so we're like, okay, we'll have a cosplay contest. And luckily, I was fortunate to have Night Darling. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, from Maui. She helped mm -hmm. run, she helps run our cosplay mm -hmm. contest, you know, to help have her, you know, expertise. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we were talking, like, you know, on, on FaceTime before, like, I don't know, will people show up? <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. Like, uh, well, we'll see. So that's why we're like, you know, that's why one day we don't want to have the two day convention and people don't show up. No, that's, yeah, no, it's, yeah. That, that's true. That's, so yeah. we're like, okay, let's see, you know, who shows up. Mm -hmm. And I always say the most wonderful, the, how do you say, satisfying thing was after. The convention, I got a lot of feedback from families. And um, so like uh, recently was like a, a mother mm -hmm. of a kind of like middle school girl, like yeah. from the mainland. Yeah. And she was just saying how she so she was so happy to have this because her daughter is really into anime. Oh, and so nice. She dressed up in a cosplay contest as, um, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Neverland. Uh, oh, terrible. The anime. I used to watch that. My daughter too. Finding the man. I don't know. It was kind of scary. But anyway, she dressed up as that character and entered the cosplay contest. 
And because of that, she connected with other kids, oh, you know, funny. who loved anime and, yeah. you know, change information. Yeah. And same thing I heard uh, at the Royal Sinesta, you know, these people meeting each other and just loving, you know, they kind of see the other costumes, the yeah. groups, and they, they get to talking. Mm -hmm. And you know, exchanging info, uh -huh. their uh -huh. yeah. you know, and the the so what I hear is like you know these kids connecting on Kauai saying we didn't know you existed. Yes, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> there are people like you here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so I was gonna say yeah that that was why we have it only one day. It's kind of oh, like we didn't a... even know. <laughs> no, but that's a very but that's a really that's. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. So for us too, we're like, I don't even know. We're gonna try it. And luckily they all came out mm -hmm. in droves. <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> they exist. <laughs> so the other thing I wanna I'm gonna ask you is off the cuff question mm -hmm. is um because you, we talked about it a little bit before we started recording. The Royal mm -hmm. Finesta Resort, you're mm -hmm. mentioning about not only were you, you weren't too sure if, um some of the choir residents were going to come out because you yeah. didn't know how, if there's going to be like, you know, is there, is there a real need for the community? Yeah. Like they don't even know what a Comic-Con yeah. was, you yeah. know, but also too, but you're telling me that people in the hotel mm -hmm. were surprised that, and that there was a convention and they, oh, they like, yeah, like visitors, visitors. Yeah, visitors. yeah. Who were just in town visiting Kauai Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, there's a Comic Con. Let's check it out. So yeah. they're like, this is awesome. And so wow. I got to meeting them, like some out of town oh, visitors. Nice. And they're saying, this is great. You know, they love Comic Cons and they saw that it was happening yeah. at the same time they're visiting. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they just happened across it. So, and then again, great. listeners, this is one of the reasons um, why I love to promote the local conventions is in case. You know, you and your family for, you know, the timing. If you're going to be visiting Kauai, you know, a couple of days before June, you know, June 8th, you know, um, the Royal, um, the Royal um, Sonesta uh, Resort mm -hmm. is going to have, you know, the convention over there for one day on, on a Saturday, June 8th. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is your chance to go down. The other, the other good thing I've always mm -hmm. love about our comic book conventions is it's nice and intimate there's no crazy long lines for that you know you gotta wait two hours just to at least get one book signed you know yeah so i was gonna say it's very intimate and it's very uh you know because we're in yukon right so uh -huh. it's kind of small and so like i was gonna say like even when meeting so oh oh going down to the the visitors thing we also have a lot of visitors from outer islands you know from like maui yes. big island oahu and what they'll do is they can is we're really close to the airport. The oh, World's okay. It's really close to the airport. So what you can do is you just fly in for the day. Yes. So you catch an early flight and then uh, you get in and it's um, you know, you catch an Uber or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hotel is really close and yes. then at the end, you know, it's it ends at six o'clock. So mm -hmm. you can catch a you eat dinner somewhere and then you catch mm -hmm. the flight back home and you know catch an Uber and in fact, that's what I did recently with the uh, Maui Comic Con. You know, being from Kauai, yes. I flew over to Maui mm -hmm. and catch an Uber from the airport, go to yeah, Maui, no, yeah. God, meet everybody, have fun. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, catch the Uber back to the airport. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. So I was like, oh, I hope people do that for, I mean, I heard people do that for Kauai. So I was uh, like, yeah, that was, that's really fun to just like uh, mm. catch an Uber, go to the con and go back. <laughs> That is nice. All right. Yeah. Um, Aaron, I'm sorry because we're slow. Yeah, I, 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 because I know I don't want to keep you too long. We've got about, oh, no, about no. 15. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, we've already, it's, that's fine. This is great. This is great. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so we've already talked about some of the guests for this year's con, Ban Daisuke. Mm. Uh, you know, he, you know, he played the sensei in Blood of the Samurai 2. He is very well known around the world as Kikaida or Inazuma or mm -hmm. or the other um Japanese um show Inazuma. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have Ban Daisuke, we've already talked about him. Also, too, Ban Daisuke, and I um 
correct me if I'm wrong, he was also in the, Jap in the Japanese horror um, trilogy, The Ring, right? Yes. The Japanese version. Yeah. That's amazing. For me, anyway, being a Kikaida fan. Yes. And a horror fan. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? He's the one that created Sadako, you know, with the Obake, the, the ghost with the long hair. Mm -hmm. He's the one that pushes her down the well. Oh my God. <laughs> it covers it up and he like created her basically. So I was like, what? That's crazy. And so I, I told him, it was kind of neat. We got to talk story, talk with him about um, horror movies too. But he said, um, the Kikaida fans don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh no, they're hero. <laughs> But I love it. <laughs> yes, and then uh, we've already mentioned um, Night Darling. She's, you know, um, she's a, a famous local cosplayer. She's, um, she attends the, um, she, you know, as Aaron mentioned, she helps out with the Kauai Comic Con. She's, um, correct me if I'm wrong. She's a, you know, she's also plays, a, you know, she's also um, helps out with the Maui Comic Con as oh. well. And also too, sometimes we'll see her at the Amazing Comic Con here on Oahu. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Your other guests, um, no, I hope they pronounce their name correctly. Mm. Sifu, yeah. I'm sorry, Sifu Mimi. Sifu is like sensei in Chinese. Oh, okay, all right. I, I just saw Sifu. So Sifu it's like Sifu oh. is a sensei, so it's like a teacher Mimi Chan. Okay, so, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's a teacher. So, um, Mimi Chan, she is actually she was a model for Disney's Mulan. The so you know the yeah. animated version. So she's the one where um she had to act out the scenes, or she did the fight choreography with the sword, and the Disney animators have to kind of copy and kind of animate everything she's doing, mm -hmm. and her facial expressions, and oh, okay. you know what she's do, like picking up a flower or something. Mm -hmm. They would animate that. So yeah, she did the fight choreography, and yeah, the uh, modeling for Mulan. And oh, and then, I was gonna say a cool thing too is uh, as a marsh. It's so funny. Like I'm such a, a geek. Like I'm also like a you know doing Blood of the Samurai and Samurai. Yeah. I love um, kung fu movies and uh, yes. Hong Kong cinema. So um, basically, I met her in Hong Kong when I was uh, uh, co-directing a, a show there called mm -hmm. Inside Hong Kong, and then she was the host. And then so as a, a martial arts fan, I was kind of geeking out because she, her father is a grand master, like a, the top of a Kung Fu master. He And he brought to America mm -hmm. um, praying mantis style. Oh, it's, so you know, like yes. the styles of uh, animal styles, like uh, yes. uh, what is that? Um, so he has his Northern uh, mantis style. So he brought it from China and built a temple in Florida and taught people like mm -hmm. uh, all uh, the Northern style, the praying mantis yeah. style. And it just grew. And so now he has like schools all around the world wow. and in America. So if, if you're into martial arts and you mm -hmm. say um, Grandmaster Chan, mm -hmm. you know, people are like, whoa, <laughs> it's kind of like a, the master. So that's his daughter. And so it's kind of neat on Kauai. We have a lot of martial arts, um, how to martial artists. So oh, they actually came to yes. Kauai Comic Con the first year. She was the guest in 2019. Yes. And she said they were talking to her more about martial arts yes. and kung fu, yeah. more than uh, Disney or her stunt yes. work, or that kind yes. of thing. So if you want to talk martial arts and kung fu, she'll be there and she'll be teaching a panel. Uh, about proper um, cosplay sword positioning, like oh, uh, the nice. mm -hmm. cosplay, because mm -hmm. um, she actually was a guest at several Comic Cons, so she has a, pa a popular panel. Oh, good. Okay. But, yeah, she'll be doing that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know on the website, um, under her credits is um, Kung Fu. Is it that? Is it the t the recent TV show? Did she do stunt work on that, or the? Uh... Um, no, she just said Kung Fu in general. Oh, just Okay, she in general, okay. like martial arts, yeah, she does. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, your next guest, Ming Chen. Now, everybody knows him from Comic Book Man. Mm -hmm. And I hope <laughs> I got this correct. I, I got it off the internet. He also co wrote the um, IDW miniseries last year, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, The Dog of War. 
So um, you want to talk a little bit more about uh, Ming Chen? Oh, yeah. Ming is awesome. So him, too. I got to meeting him uh, at San Diego Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. He was doing a signing, and I was standing in line to get his autograph. And because I'm a big, of course, comic book man, right? Yeah. So. You know, so it's like, oh, I got to meet him. He's, you know, the Asian being Asian. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Dude, yeah. I was telling him, it was kind of interesting. Because back then, he was like, it was kind of rare to see Asian faces on TV. Yes. So mm -hmm. for me, it was inspiring, you know, especially in that comic book geek world and meeting yes. Lee and all this. It was like, wow, this guy is like living the dream. And oh, I'm wow. a huge, huge, huge Kevin Smith fan. Mm -hmm. Of course, being a filmmaker in the 90s. And so he was like my idol. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Ming Chen, I knew about Ming Chen before he was Ming Chen on a AMC. Oh, because uh, nice. I used to listen to his podcast. Okay. Uh, you know, and then also I knew about his website, that he was the one that did Kevin Smith's website. Because oh. I was like, oh, wow, you know, Asian name. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I stood in line. I said, oh, I always want to meet you. And, you know, and he's super friendly, super nice. And um, it was funny because right behind, oh, so I got to telling him about, Kawaii Comic Con, yeah. and I got the card and explained it to him, you yes. know, what it was, and he was super, you know, intrigued, and wow, that sounds great, and um, right behind me, it was kind of funny, a funny story was, so right behind me were these other local Hawaii guys, <laughs> these two oh, guys, nice. and it was funny because we, both of us, we all came bearing uh, macadamia nuts. <laughs> That's nice. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Like, like, hey, from Hawaii, you're giving Ming Chen. <laughs> and it was funny because after I said bye to Ming, or they were behind me, and they started talking to him, and they were from the Hawaii's uh, Pacific Outpost, Outpost, the 501st. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So we're, they were up there for San Diego, and I guess they wanted to meet Ming Chen, too. <laughs> but yeah, he actually came down. Last year, he was a guest. Oh. And yeah, everybody just loved him. He was the MC for our um, cosplay contest. And oh, that's nice. Yeah, he, he did uh, panels and mm -hmm. he had met all the fans of Comic Book Man and uh, was that Kevin Smith? And, mm -hmm. yeah. and so he's coming back. That's really <laughs> so, yeah. nice. I'm joking. It'd be nice if he brought a friend with him. <laughs> ah, I know. I, I told him you many, 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 many times. No. You gotta tell him. every time he's with Kevin Smith, I see on. I was like, you gotta. I'm texting him. <laughs> you gotta invite him. Just, just bring him down. Just we're not gonna announce it, you know. Yeah, just come yeah. down. No, no, this guy here. No, that's not Kevin. He's my manager. He's just running the table, you know. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So that's the dream, you know. Yeah. One day. <laughs> We can have, uh, yeah, more guests like that. <laughs> uh, All right, so um, I'm going to say we've already talked to, you know, about Matt Frank already. Um, mm -hmm. What about some of the, okay, now local artists, we got to mention John's going to be there. John John Morcom mm -hmm. is going to be yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, the other legend, artist. Holy legend. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. And also, too, um, um. This listeners, you guys have to keep an eye out for this um, local artist on Vu. And it's spelled mm -hmm. A N H. That's Vu. V as in Victor U. You know, um, he, she's very nice. Um, mm -hmm. I know she did a variant cover for Source Points Press's um, Good Boy, the Good Boy series, and I think it was like last. I think it was like last year that that variant cover came out um and i you know so she her she's very talented you beautiful want to talk about artwork. more yeah yes. she's like beautiful artwork and so detailed yes right? like so detailed yeah. so, and then so it's kind of cool like you know like her her work it's so you know uh uh, so beautiful and vibrant so uh, so but she's so sweet like when you meet yeah. her right <laughs> she's like so soft-spoken and sweet and and it's so cool she's actually so she's gonna have a table mm -hmm. at uh Kauai Comic Con at the in the ballroom and she's bringing her mother yes her mother helps her yeah, but, yes and so they'll be together and the mom her mother's so sweet too so yes yeah, I'm so glad that uh, it was funny because I, I was kind of worried. It's like, oh, a lot of our guests are returning. Mm -hmm. the, they, they had luckily they've all had our artists and vendors. They all had such a great time that 
you know, they, they wish to come back. So I gave them uh, all like, you know, like alumni, <laughs> like, they, yeah. you know, invite everybody back, you know, as long as they didn't cause any trouble, oh, you yeah. know, and everybody, you know, because my family runs that this is a family run con. Oh, oh good. And so, you know, it's all my family and relatives and my sister mm -hmm. and parents and wife and kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're all running around and, you know, that kind of, um, you know, family friends. And yeah. so I, I get the, the word of mouth, you know, like, oh, if uh, there were anybody you know, misbehaving or complaints or whatever. Yeah. And so luckily, you know, everything, they're all good. So I'm like, oh, good. Yes, Invite yeah. everybody back. And mm -hmm. so I was kind of worried because Ann got back to me kind of late. And she was like, oh, is there still space? Yeah, no, yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can like fit you in. I was like, I was worried. I, I was worried that maybe she had a, you know, she couldn't make it or mm -hmm. I was when I didn't hear back from her. But yeah, luckily she's coming back. Oh. <laughs> Now I know um Todd Bernardi, he's another he's another artist. Um he lives in Maui. Um I know his um one of his um past works was the the Kukui project. I know he has another one that the title mm -hmm. is escaping me right now. So Todd's gonna be there. Um mm -hmm. who else is gonna be there too? Uh, so look at the list now. So we have like uh was that Todd, uh Christopher Loman. Michael uh, Cannon, Trini Graphics, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, um, Mojo Tactical, uh, Pancho, uh, let's see, oh, um, Yuma Fuki, uh -huh. uh, Omichu, Jimmy Sparrow, mm -hmm. uh, oh, Seven Sketches, Derek Wait, Fabian, Seven okay. Sketches, have you heard of him? He's like uh, popular, uh, he does a lot of artwork, uh, but he's from Kauai, so it's kind of cool where, uh, you know, he gets to come back home. That's and nice. he was like classmates with my cousins, so he gets to see them and catch oh, up. And yes, uh -huh. oh, there's a cool one is um Moana McAdams. She's from Kauai, but she lives on the mainland and she's local and she does she's the writer for Lilo and Stitch, the uh comic book. Oh so writer with uh, Greg Puck. Yes. Uh -huh. so, uh, yeah, Hulk and yeah, so the, she did the Lilo and Stitch. So it's like, yeah, get your Lilo and Stitch comic signed by her. <laughs> Moana. And uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, cool people from Oahu mm -hmm. and all that or around the world coming as vendors, special guests. And oh, uh, a cool one uh, that we got to is, um, so we got also uh, Doug Shannon. Oh, he, Doug Shannon, he, he's on Kauai, but mm -hmm. he has, he's a Star Trek collector of original Star Trek memorabilia. Oh my God. So he has all the original costumes, like from... Oh <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, the, the 60 years old, yeah. So okay. he basically is cool because he brings all the props and things. He has a table so you can see all the, like from uh, Enterprise, like what, Archers? Uh, I don't know, you can see all the... But basically he brings in like the mannequins with the costume. Yeah, yes. On the table, he has like tricorders, like original tricorders from like i think it's from the uh, original series but it's kind of neat because uh i got to actually hold it yes, <laughs> I was like, I mean, oh this is, like, this is great yes. it's a star trek fan so that's kind of cool as a star trek fan you get to see that kind of original memorabilia. really <laughs> oh and then um we got um console the video game rock band okay they, they usually play at kawaii con mm -hmm. they play uh they're like a rock band they play video game music Mm -hmm. Like oh, okay. from Zelda, Tetra, yeah. Mario, that kind of thing, but like rock versions. Mm -hmm. So they'll be performing. Mm -hmm. And also, um, we have Kim. Oh, this is uh, so Kim Hope, Kimberly Hope. She's mm -hmm. a Nahoku Hano Hano uh, nominated. She's a violinist, oh, okay. like a professional violinist. And so she she's going to be coming back. She was such a big hit. So she's like a, a young girl, like violinist, like my daughter's friends. And she can play all these like video game songs and Harry Potter and Star Wars and Mandalorian. She can play all these songs. That's so amazing. she's on stage yeah. on the big screen showing, you know, and she's playing. So she was this, she was a big hit with the crowd. They just loved her. And so she'll be back. Mm -hmm. The violin. And it, and it's funny because I told her like, oh, so hopefully we'll get to try this is uh, a thing that I see at Comic Cons is these musicians that follow around cosplayers. Like yes. if, if there's a Mario, then they'll go up to dun 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 dun, oh, you know, and yes. around. They're like, yay! <laughs> so 
or if you see Harry Potter, she'll start playing Harry Potter. And then, yeah. So she's all excited to try that out this year on Kauai. <laughs> it's going to be nice. Um, we're slowly, I've got a couple more minutes. Like oh. I said, I don't want to take up too much of your time because oh, if yeah, not, no, now, this, this, this interview is going to go three hours and <laughs> your wife, and your, kid, your, wife and, your wife and your daughter going, <laughs> hey, uh, Aaron, time to go to bed or your kid be, dad hey you know daddy's geeking out again <laughs> it's so funny it's like get to the point of Kawhi promoting Kawhi comic con but basically we're just like kind of like geeking out <laughs> but the good, no but Aaron, the good thing about it is that but it, the thing about it i love it because it shows your love for comics and pop culture mm -hmm. it showed that you know because it kind of then it shows that it's like we're on Kauai. Why don't we have a convention? The, mm, Big Island has, the Big Island has one. I don't know if that's still going on anymore after the pandemic. Maui has one. Oahu always has at least three conventions. You know, Kauai Con, the animated Comic Con, mm. Honolulu, amazing Comic Con. And you're mm. kind of going, well, what about Kauai? And then you're kind of, and your daughter goes, well, why don't we just do our own? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the cool thing is, is like, you know, after doing, I got to say, talking about the community, the Kauai community, they are so appreciative. Yes. Like, because, you know, they're so, I got nothing. So to me, it was like, that's what I'm doing it for. Mm -hmm. It's yes. like for the, to bring this to the people of Kauai, yes. basically who can't travel. Yes. Because there's a lot of local families. So in fact, the, last year we had it in April, mm -hmm. but part of, part of the feedback was, they should have we should have it in summer because a lot of the kids are stuck on Kauai mm -hmm. and they, they're not traveling and they need something to do so if we could have it in the summer this time so yeah. like yeah okay you know since it's for you know the Kauai community then we switched it to June 8th so hopefully yeah the community yeah can, there'll be more kids and yeah yes. It's about, uh, in fact, I was going to say, like, uh, I guess spending time, in fact, the the first year, I actually, it's kind of crazy. Um, it's all about the community because I actually missed the first year. Oh. Of my, of my own con. <laughs> <laughs> People, I missed it, like, because basically I kind of, it was kind of crazy. I kind of overworked myself. Mm. Like, you know, this being the first one, there was just yeah. a lot of things and, I wasn't getting enough sleep and, you know, I guess all the stress and the buildup. So the night before I just got hit, you know, I got really sick. And then, but luckily I have my family, mm -hmm. you know, I have relatives. So, you know, they're like, don't worry, we got it covered. And so I wasn't even there, but I was at home in bed, kind of like texting and doing FaceTime, you know, kind of like avatar you know, yeah, yeah. Avatars running around. Okay. Go yeah. to this, thing, like a uh, Carl Potts. He yes. was, I guess, you know, from Marvel. He yes, was, um yeah for listeners yeah alien the the i mm -hmm. think the co-creator of alien legion that's has been that's the big news has been an option oh, as yeah, a movie that's and right. hopefully but sorry okay so carl Pos i hope it gets yeah i hope it gets made that movie but, okay yeah. so i'm sorry but, about carl Pos but, no no carl so Pos like that yeah so carl Pos so i luckily you know i had my daughter there and said like, okay make sure he has a uh, the speaker set up and you know the panel and uh, uh the big screen you know like what the monitor yeah. and you know what you know the kind of like okay make sure you have this and blah, blah, blah. so luckily everybody's all kind of running around and they did it so they luckily they said everything was prepared enough by me so our yes. were kind of, so it was just kind of like luckily everything went smoothly you know of course it's our first concert they're little hiccups here and there yeah. but we smoothed it out you know the second year and even the second year, we had a little bumps here and there, but we can smooth it out. And so hopefully, you know, you learn over time, you know, mm -hmm. things to do, things what not to do. And, you know, the unexpected always pops up with whatever event. So, but yeah, yeah, I was going to say how it's, I, I, it's, it's been, uh, what is that about the community and uh, the appreciation. So that kind of keeps me going. You know, it's like. Aaron, I'm going to ask. Yeah. Can I have five more minutes of your time? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Now, um, so this is the fifth anniversary of the con. Actually, I was going to say, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but oh. it's the fifth anniversary, but this is our third year in person. We did during the pandemic, these uh, virtual cons. Yeah. 
So we had, um, you know, like Greg Rucka, mm-hmm. and, you know, all these uh, special guests. So in a way, yeah. it was kind of neat. You know, we, we did the whole virtual thing, which is every, mm-hmm. which a lot of people did. But this is actually our third in-person mm-hmm. live. So in a way, it's kind of interesting because last year we had it. It was a first for me <laughs> being yeah, there. Yes. I actually got to experience. It's so funny because everybody who was there, like even the guests and the vendors, you know, you know, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, so how is it? How is it? You're calm. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fun. I go, oh, yeah. So I got to experience. So, yeah, this will be my third, okay. third time. Where would you like to see the convention five years from now? Mm, good question. Yeah, I just hope that it keeps on growing. And basically, word of mouth. Uh-huh. I think, you know, um, hopefully word of mouth spreads. Uh-huh. Because it seems like, you know, the community, you know, they're like, oh, it's like a, a fun event. So I'm hoping yes. uh-huh. in five years, you know, right now we're really promoting it. You know, like, you know, people or even when you see people on the street, like, uh-huh. oh, oh, I kind of heard about that. You know, yeah. oh, what is that? So I'm hoping in five years people will... Kind of so like you know we have like the farm fair or different carnivals here mm-hmm. you know or I don't know bone dances I don't know but you know like things you know like yearly yeah. things so I'm hoping in five years when we say Comic Con then they'll be like oh okay it's that time of year again yeah. so yeah hopefully and and it grows I hope that uh, we'll be able to keep it going. And not have it, you know, like like oh, that'll be so sad. If, you know, if people start com- stop coming. So no, but I don't I think, take it for granted. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. thing is, I think what's good is that mm-hmm. what's very good is that one, you have a convention on Kauai. Mm-hmm. Um, two is that the opportunity is there to grow. The mm-hmm. other thing too, which is very good too, is that I can't, I'm I'm going to go back to the on Kauai too because mm-hmm. if you start reaching out to other comic book creators or other media guests, mm-hmm. they're going to go, yeah, I've been to Hawaii, yeah, I've been to Oahu. It's kind of like another say, oh Kauai, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh huh, you know. That's how like Ming Chen. That's how I got Ming Chen we hooked because mm-hmm. it was like I had my honeymoon on Kauai. We love Kauai. Oh. I always wanted to go back. I always wanted to return. So I was like, yay, all right, there we go. <laughs> so nice. you gotta come back. Yeah. So no, you're right. How uh, that is a nice selling point if they know yeah. about Kauai. Or I know like, you know, for Matt Frank, you know, like a, a selling point was, you know, he saw the website, you know, like where the Royal Sonesta is. Yeah. If you kind of Google what's there to see on Kauai. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's, like, really excited, too. So the cool thing, too, is, like, you know, for guests like Matt, you know, he's excited to, like, not only be at the con, but to also discover and, you know, to sightsee. You know, like, yes. Waimea Canyon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Poipu or the Princeville, all the different uh, lookouts. And, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, also, good opportunity for sightseeing, too. <laughs> um, that's perfect segue. Where's the best place to grab a plate lunch? And listeners ah. of plate lunch is yeah. like there's a main dish, two scoops <laughs> of white rice, macaroni salad. Yeah. Oh, I would for say- the toss salad. No, we don't believe in toss salad here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say quite uh I told Ming Chen this too. Mark's Mark's place. Mm-hmm. That's in Lake Hui. It's like ah. a popular uh, plate lunch place, uh local mocos and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Good. Okay. I know for me and my family, um it's it's kind of a, a local place, but mm-hmm. uh, more visitors are are discovering it, I guess. But it's Tip Top Cafe. Oh, okay. So that's a very that's where kind of the locals go <laughs> for the Simon, and of course there's Hamuras for Simon. You know, oh. Simon, that's mm-hmm. a popular long time place. Nice. Yeah. All right. Last mm-hmm. question about choir. Where's the best place to grab shave ice? Ah, and- shave ice, uh, Wailua. Ah, Wailua. Okay. Wailua, there's also Jojo's though people like there too but Wailua and there's also this new place called Fresh Shave mm-hmm. in Kaloa I know that's kind of that's popular and then we tried it out it's really fine it's oh, almost like God. the Korean the Korean shave ice is really fine yes. shave ice yeah yeah so that's that was really good too Fresh Shave <laughs> alright Aaron last question any closing words to our listeners mm-hmm 
uh, any closing words is, uh, yeah, I hope you can uh, make it to Kauai, Kauai Comic Con. And uh, what is it? Yeah, if you could help spread the word that mm -hmm. uh, Kauai, our tiny little island, mm -hmm. has a Comic Con. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know. Yes. Because it's a little island, you know, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, King Kong, and it's basically a lot of jungles and it's small. You know, mm -hmm. some people don't know. A lot of people, when I tell them, like, what? There's a Comic Con? So, mm -hmm. yep, we have a Comic Con where we're starting. So, if you could come by and help support it and or help spread the word, mm -hmm. help it grow, mm -hmm. <laughs> word out. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Aaron, mahalo. Just thank you very much for your time. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to interview you. I wish you all the success with this year's Kauai Comic Con. And mm -hmm. I hope, you know, everyone who, you know, who, who attends this convention will have a great time. And I hope, mm -hmm. I hope they find what they're looking for. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> right? Because at conventions, we dig through the dollar bins or we, mm -hmm. we look through those, you know, the, or even, even action figures, you know? Yeah, so we're going to have, yeah, we have all these vintage action figures, uh, vendors, and old comic books, and uh, toys, so yeah. we have all of that, too, so it's a good chance for people to kind of browse, and, oh, before I forget, too, yeah. this is kind of cool, is using my martial arts uh, yeah. friends things, so from Ninja EX, uh, I got the actor Kevin Wan, he's a uh, martial artist champion so i asked him to he'll be dressing up as a jedi and with his friend kwang bin and he's in like marvel's uh was it um it was actually but anyway he there's he's a stunt guy for like uh -huh. wi-fi and all but yeah. he and his friend they're going to be dressing up as jedi and sith and they're currently choreo choreographing a, a lightsaber a stage show so they'll be up on the main stage and they'll have uh they'll be doing a lightsaber choreographed Star Wars uh, lightsaber battle and with the music, maybe um, Duel of the Fates, I don't know, or uh, maybe, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they, they had the sound effects of the lightsaber. Yes. Uh, they're going to be doing a duel on the main stage, like a, a show, yes. a performance. And I actually got that idea for a lot of it. Like, I love Japan, Kamen Rider, or uh, yes. Ultra, they do these stage yeah. shows. So I was like, hey, yeah. do you like doing one of these shows? You know, maybe do a performance. And so they're going to do a quick performance. And then we also have a table where the kids can make their own lightsabers. So, yeah, we have a make your own lightsaber table. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can make, and this is from, my, my wife is a, a teacher at the Wilcox Elementary. And she has a, she runs her own um, event called STEM, STEM Night. And it's like science, technology. So she's so we're kind of like porting some education ideas, oh, science nice. and education to the Comic Con. Yes. So the thing she does is uh, make your own lightsabers. So we'll be the kids and whoever they can make their own lightsaber, mm -hmm. and then they can come in, they can watch a show. Yes. And then uh, we're gonna have uh, Sifu Mimi Chan, you know Disney's mm -hmm. Mulan do her panel or up on stage teach these kids all these different lightsaber moves <laughs> and poses <laughs> ready your swords panel so we're saying oh that should be fun <laughs> but you know and correct me if i'm wrong because i think because like you know listeners like you know the convention is going to be on june 8th and if you are on Kauai on june 8th please stop by you know um, the world um sonesta Kauai resort because the other thing too is um um because I think that Star Wars the new Star Wars series was it Acolytes that's gonna come out on Disney Plus the Acolyte yeah, yeah I, I think it's gonna drop, drop on like June I think so around then oh, yeah, yeah. Around... So I'm hoping to see some cosplayers <laughs> oh my god but that's perfect that you're gonna have like the Star yeah. Wars hype and usually so that's the cool thing about Kauai is nice to see Star Wars fans turn up you know people dressed up with their lightsabers yeah. and yeah we had a uh, Kylo Ren and Rey's yeah. yeah so yeah we have our Star Wars fans here too that's <laughs> on Kauai great. so <laughs> listeners you know again if you are vacationing on Kauai you know during this time of June 8th or if you know you know, um, you know, your friends who love comics and stuff, tell them about this convention. 
you know, tell mm -hmm. them to stop by the resort, check out mm -hmm. the 2024 Kauai Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Aaron, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It, Oh, and I was going to say, you can mention to those same people is uh, we have a lot of um, Hawaii artists, you know, being there. So, you know, like they get to pick up like something unique, which is a Hawaii made comic that's book. So you can true. say, hey, this comic book was made in Hawaii, you know, so true. something rare and have it signed by the artist. <laughs> yes, that's true. It is. Aaron, thank you very much. So. Um, I want to thank Drew, the host of Comics for Fun and Profit, for putting this episode together. Drew, thank you very much for all your hard work behind the scenes. And if you are a new listener, please check out new episodes of Comics for Fun and Profit that comes out every Saturday. And I want to thank you, the listener. Thank you very much for your time. And and Aaron, I have to thank you for your time. Oh, you know, thank I mean, we're you. just geeking out a bunch of holes. <laughs> it's like, know. you know, this is great. It's funny. You know, that's how like uh, John Murakami and Jason Yadal whenever we go to Zippies, you know, <laughs> eating. It's just like we just let's talk about Comic Con. We end up talking about Scooby Doo or I don't know some Marvel, just, all this other stuff. <laughs> but it's all tied in together. The other thing too, what I love too is like, like you. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off the track here, but what I love is that, you know, there are fans in Kauai. Like you said, you yeah. have some guy who has, you know. Some of the original Star Trek uniforms, you know, yeah. we're talking like, like I said, this is 60 year old, you know, mm -hmm. holy grail stuff, you know, <laughs> and it's like, who would have known? Because nobody would have known. Mm -hmm. Unless he reached out to me and yeah. I was like, hey, Comic Con, I have some Star Wars props and like, yeah. I'm Star, Star Trek. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Too, like, and also, too, it's, What's also nice too is that you have some of your vendors that, you know, that have, you know, um, you know, they have comics to sell and someone, you know, one of the attendees may, you know, I'm not being sarcastic, but they may find that hidden treasure of that one issue to complete their set in Kauai. I'm mm -hmm. not being sarcastic, but that that could happen. Or they come mm -hmm. across something where, oh God, you know, the, all these other conventions you know, it's like, you know, the price is like a hundred bucks, you know, 200 bucks. But here at Kauai, they're selling it for 80, 50 bucks, you know, and that's a deal. And another cool thing is uh, like Ban Daisuke, you know, Kikaida. You know, if you were meeting on Oahu or anyone else, or anywhere else, usually there's like this crazy long line and you yes. got to like for hours, you know, yeah. to get to him. But over here, it's not that long. You can get to him. Oh, oh I almost forgot. Uh, he's bringing over. This is for some Kikaida fans. He's bringing over some exclusive merch, which is um he does a Bandaisuke. He did a a CD, uh wow. like he sings the Kikaida song and kind of yes. uh, so he sings and it's a sold out CD. Yes. But he has some uh he's he, he actually yeah he I, I, he sent it to me ahead of time actually so I got it like a box full of these like sold out CDs to sell at Kauai Comic Con and for him to sign. So I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> it's like, I want some one. Of, <laughs> some of these, like you said, it's sold out because if you go, because listeners, if you guys go on eBay and stuff or try to even look for the, mm -hmm. the original key kind of soundtrack on CD, it's like 150, you know, like 100, 150 dollars. I remember mm -hmm. I saw, um, Sorry, mm -hmm. Eric. I mean, if we got to go, just tell me. You no, know, no, no, no. I got time. Don't worry. <laughs> because because um, there's a used record store here at Hungry, um, Hungry Ear on Oahu. Mm -hmm. You know, they sell um, very, you know, you know, very, um, they sell used records and they go through the records to make sure that, you know, how much they can price it at. Mm -hmm. I saw a mint Kikaida um, album from the 1970s. It was still, it, I don't know if they rewrapped it, but it was clean it mm. was like there's no bent and i forgot how I, it was outrageous i, I, <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> I, I don't know, i'm just i'm just i'm get i'm just throwing numbers out maybe 100 150 bucks oh yeah it's oh my awful. god but all the, the yeah. childhood memories like yeah holy cow, the you play yeah, it's funny. Like we went to Japan with some Hawaii friends. You were like, "Hey, look in the store. There's a Kikaida doll. Look." Yeah. And there's all the price, like hundreds something. We're like, yes. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you have that stuff too, bring it to Kauai. 
or bring it down and he'll sign it. And yeah, he's like super happy and, you know, he's very appreciative of his fans. Yes. So yeah, yeah he'll, he'll give, so that's the kind, it's uh, intimate. Yes. It's intimate. So you can, accessible, very accessible. <laughs> Now's the chance. <laughs> All right, listeners. Now we are finally wrapping things up. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> very much for your time. And, you know, thank you for listening to this great episode. And Aaron, again, thank you for your time. I know we've gone, we've gone over. Yes. <laughs> it was thank fun. You. So, you thank you. It was great talking to you. <laughs> uh, so listeners, again, until next time, guys, aloha. Our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics, back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredical. Uh, they are our LCS and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Economa Walk, Wisconsin closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.